Hello dear students, I am Dr. Moin. In this video, we are going to discuss about the instrumentation of UV visible spectroscopy. So we will discuss all the parts of UV visible spectrophotometer in detail. So watch this video till the end and if you didn't subscribe my channel yet, then subscribe it. This is how the spectrophotometer looks like. Actually, it is the double beam instrument and this is made up by Perkin Elmer. So there are different companies which are designing, which are manufacturing spectrophotometers. So you can see here is the design and that is by Perkin Elmer. So this is the main part, spectrophotometer, and here is the system computer. This is the CPU uh, and uh, from system computer, we control all the functions performed in the spectrophotometer. So here is the main part of the spectrophotometer and you can see here uh, these are the places where samples are put. Both single and double beam spectrophotometers are in common use means these are available in market. In double beam instrument the radiation is separated into two halves. One of them is passed through the sample while other is through the reference cell. Double beam instrument might use two detectors or single detector. So if there are two detectors, then these are individually used for the two beams, one coming from the sample cell while other from the reference cell. While if it is using a single detector, then both the beams are made to fall on this detector alternately. Double beam instrument can be used at a fixed wavelength or it can be used to scan through a spectral region. For example, if you are using a sample whose lambda max is known, so definitely you fix the wavelength of your instrument and check the absorption of your sample. And if your sample is unknown, so it means you do not know the lambda max of your sample. So first you will scan your sample through the entire region to know about the uh, what is the lambda max. In the next slide, we will see the schematic diagram of double beam instrument. So here is the schematic diagram of double beam instrument. You can see here are the two sources of electromagnetic radiations. One is for visible light and other one is for UV light. Okay, so the radiations are focused to this mirror which sent uh, which directs uh, these electromagnetic radiations to the next part and that is monochromator. Monochromator converts the polychromatic light into monochromatic light. If you are interested to study the process on a single wavelength, then definitely you must have to use monochromator. So it uses prisms or grating devices which disperses light into its components. And here is the exit slit and you have set the knob of monochromator at that wavelength that it can only allow to pass that, that wavelength in which you are interested. Okay, so here is the monochromatic light and next portion is beam separator. Beam separator separate this beam into two equal beams, means of, two, of equal intensities. So one is passed through the sample cell while other is passed through the reference cell. Then there is, then there are detectors, photodetectors which detect how much light is absorbed. And then there is data processing unit amplifier which amplify uh, uh, the results and finally send it to the recorder pen which gives us the final results in the form of spectrum. Now we will discuss all of its parts one by one. So first one is source of radiation. So source of visible radiation which is usually used is tungsten filament lamp. It is shown over here, you can see. This is the tungsten filament lamp. It is that common lamp which is used to light our homes. While the source of UV radiations which is being used is either hydrogen discharge lamp or deuterium discharge lamp. And you can see here the deuterium discharge lamp. Next part is monochromator. Monochromator is the device which converts polychromatic light into monochromatic light. Through entrance slit, light enters monochromator and falls on prism or diffraction grating, which are the part of monochromator. 
The prism or diffraction grating disperses polychromatic light into monochromatic light, which is focused through exit slit to the beam separator, which is the next part of spectrophotometer. Now how to select the wavelength of interest? So it can be done with the help of knob or automatically with the help of motor. Some instruments, they, they use knob, so we rotate that knob and set our wavelength of interest. While if we are working on some sophisticated type of instrument, then it uses uh, software and through software we set the wavelength of our interest. Next part is cells or cavities. These were used to introduce our sample into spectrophotometers. These are available in variety of materials, but mostly used materials are quartz and glass cells. Glass cells can only be used in visible region, means this can't be used in UV region because glass absorbs ultraviolet radiations. While quartz is transparent in both UV and visible region, it means quartz cells can be used in both UV and visible region. So there is no problem with quartz. Generally cells are rectangular in shape. You can see here these are rectangular in shape and their path length is one centimeter. What does this mean that this width? This one is usually one centimeter but cells with longer path lengths up to 10 centimeter and shorter path lengths up to 0.1 centimeter are also available. Now how to handle this cell? You can see the two sides are transparent while the other two are non-transparent sides. So we handle, we carry this cell through non-transparent sides. You can see in this diagram. The long path length cells and even multiple path cells are also available. And these are used for low concentration samples. For example, if we have to run gaseous samples, so usually we use multiple path cells because we know that in gases the particles are far apart from each other. So that is why we have to use this one. And if we see the construction of these multiple path cells, so we see that there are mirrors in the walls of these cells. So when light enters into these uh, cells, so it has reflections several times before it exits the cell. So you can see it in the left diagram that light enters and it has reflection several times and then it, it exits out. And the right diagram is the real diagram which has been taken uh, from the spectrophotometer. Now one thing should be kept in mind that both cells should have similar dimensions. Next part is optical chopper. The absorption by the sample is measured from the difference between the intensities of two beams, that is reference beam and sample beam, which is mostly measured as ratio recording method. Means how the absorption by the sample is measured. That is measured by ratio recording method in which we take the ratio of two beams, reference versus sample beam. Now the two beams coming from the sample and reference cells, they, they fall on radiation chopping device that is called optical chopper. Chopper consists of a rotating semicircular mirror which is shown over here. You can see here, here is the mirror, circular mirror. Some of the parts are exposed while some of the parts are blocked. It rotates at a frequency which can be controlled. Normally, it rotates at 10 cycles per second. So when it rotates, it causes reference and sample beam to be reflected alternately to the detector. There are several types of detectors, but in spectrophotometers only two are generally used and these are phototubes and photomultiplier tubes. You can see here are the photo tube and here is the photo multiply tube. In double beam instrument, photo multiply tubes are most often used as these can detect even low intensity radiations. Photo tubes are generally used in single beam instruments. 
there is a problem with photomultiplier tubes and that is these show instability towards high intensity radiations because these high intensity radiations can even damage these detectors so there are used some automatic shutters in these detectors which protect them from the exposure towards these high intensity radiations at any moment beam falling on detector is either reference beam or sample beam. that is the job being done by the optical chopper when sample has absorbed some radiation of particular wavelength the detector will be receiving from chopper alternately an intense reference beam and weak sample beam so we know that the beams are falling on detector alternately and if our sample has absorbed some part of light then definitely definitely beam coming from the sample is a weak beam while the beam coming from the reference cell is an intense and when these beams fall on detector they generate current and as the intensities of these beams is varying is changing so the current produced is an alternating current so next part which is an amplifier amplifier is designed in such a way that it can only amplify the alternating current so the information uh, that amplifier uh, takes that is fed to the next part and that is recorder pen which records absorbance against wavelength so you can see the final result we get in the form of spectrum so here are the bands here are the peaks on x-axis there is wavelength on y-axis there is molar absorptivity epsilon so this was all about double beam spectrophotometer and what's the difference between double and single beam spectrophotometer in single beam spectrophotometer there is only a single beam mean the beam is not separated into two beams here here is only the single beam so you can put only a single cell at a time so firstly we put a reference cell in the spectrophotometer and we uh, note the absorption or there is an option that we can do the auto zero uh, on the instrument and then we and then we put the sample cell in the instrument and in this way we uh, we are able to get uh, to note the absorption made by our sample so dear student this is all about the current video thanks for watching like my video and subscribe my channel to get in touch with my upcoming videos. Thank you very much.